my days. I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My come. Oh, I thought we were both singing on that one. Sorry. Shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. I circled the tag eight times. <clears throat> Did we mix this one? Were you in the worship? Oh, well then, I don't have to worry about that one.
Welcome to Peace Lutheran Church this Sunday morning. Uh, please join us for our opening song, Shepherd of My Soul. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead, I will follow. I have made the choice to listen for your voice. Wherever you may lead, I will go. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead, I will follow. I have made the choice to listen for your voice. Wherever you may lead, I will go. Be it in a quiet pasture or by a gentle stream, shepherd of my soul is by my side. Should I face a mighty mountain or a valley dark and deep, the shepherd of my soul will be my guide. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead, I will follow. I have made the choice to listen for your voice. Wherever you may lead, I will go. forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted you were condemned I'm alive and well your spirit is within me because you died and rose again I'm forgiven 
forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you. Amazing love. you, my King, would die for me. <clears throat> Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you in all I do.
All right, so we're going to do it this way. Now I'll invite you to stand as you are able. Not ideal, but we work with it, right? The Holy Gospel this day comes from the Gospel according to Mark, the seventh chapter. Now, when the Pharisees and some of the scribes had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat unless anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, why do your disciples not live according to the traditions of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to a human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that every evil intention comes. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. We might have a solution here. Just one second. All right. Hopefully, maybe that'll work. You gotta love technology, right? It's great unless it doesn't work. Then what do we do? Okay. Try it this way. Well, I hear talking over here. That's a good thing, though, right? Oh, look at that. All right. I think we're picking it up at home, which is good. Never know what's going to happen. All right. Here we go. Recently, I posted a picture on Facebook page of a dress shirt with a tie hanging over each shoulder. I think Steve or Dan, do you have that have that photo? There we go. All right. So I posted this to my Facebook page and I asked my friends to tell me which tie they preferred with this shirt. Now in full disclosure, I asked my wife her opinion and of course I didn't like her opinion and so therefore I went to uh, random people on the internet to back me up on my choice. And to say that people had an opinion uh, is t saying it mildly because we had over 75 comments regarding which tie goes best with that shirt. And no, there is still no consensus yet because y'all are about 50-50. So with each response, I looked at the person making that response. I looked at my relationship with them, and then I thought about whether or not they have fashion sense, or better yet, whether I trust their fashion sense, or whether they're uneducated. Now, many commented that the tie, the yellow tie, was more fitting to me as a person, but they would probably wear the purple checked one with the shirt if it was them. Now, I know what my choice was. Before I asked my wife, before I posted it to Facebook, before I drug it into our sermon on Sunday morning, I knew what I wanted to do. But I also knew that maybe I should ask because maybe what I wanted to do was not what should be done. I think we've all been faced with a similar choice to follow what our heart says or do what we know to be right. And sometimes what our heart says and what is right is the exact same thing. And sometimes those are very vastly different. 
We know what are the best choices when it comes to our faith. We also know that our own personal bias doesn't always stand up to what we know to be the best idea when living out our faith. We might think that we've made the right choice. Our heart tells us that we've made the right choice, but if we step back and truly look at what we've decided, we might realize that our human nature has gotten in the way of really what we need to be doing. Our reading from James gives us this example. Be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they look like. In other words, make sure you actually live out what you are hearing and saying and not simply going through the motions. It's not enough to say that you have faith if you aren't going to put it into action. We say do unto others, but we snap at anyone who might make our lives even the slightest bit inconvenienced. We say we are welcoming to everyone, but we are wary of the person who does not act or look like us. We say we believe in God's forgiveness, but we struggle to forgive ourselves. We struggle to offer a second chance to those we disagree with. We hold grudges because it's so much easier than forgiveness. We ask advice from our family, and when our family doesn't give us good advice, we ask our friends. And when we don't care for our friends' advice, we ask total strangers to justify what we want to do with our heart. But then we struggle to actually live out what we've been told. We hear words of faith, speak words of faith, but then we struggle to actually put them into action. The writer of this letter is very direct in the challenge to do more than hear words of faith. We are to live them out or it simply becomes noise that we make. It's like shouting into the wind. What purpose does it serve? Either we need to be all in with how we live out our faith or we need to rethink why we even believe that faith matters. It's like looking in a mirror and only seeing part of the picture. Our relationship with God is messy. It's broken. It's chaotic. It's not neat and clean. It's not kept in a box that we put on a shelf and take down when convenient. God pushes us to be uncomfortable. God pushes us to challenge ourselves and to rethink our decisions. Those who constantly put faith into action are the ones who understand that faith isn't about them, but it's about others. If we are constantly living out our faith in a genuine and honest manner, we will affect others because they will see it in our action. And if we put our faith into action because it makes us look good, then we are not really living out our faith. We're not doing what God has commanded or what Jesus modeled. Our concern should never be about ourselves, but rather about how we can share the good news of God's love and forgiveness with others. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Let's be honest. Seeing beyond ourselves is the hardest part of living out our faith because we have been trained to look inward. We have been trained to look out for others, ourselves first and then for others. We live in a world that cares about personal success more than the success of the whole, especially when we don't get what we want the way we want it and how we want it. It's easy to forget that living out our faith means trusting in God and knowing that God will not leave us stranded, that we will not be abandoned when the going gets rough. And that's tough for us because most of us bail at the first sign of trouble. And God has promised to be with us in the midst of the brokenness and in the midst of the joy. Verse 27 reminds us that religion that is pure and undefiled before God is this, to care for the orphans and the widows and to keep oneself unstained by the world. 
Beloved, you are called to care for the least of these. You are called to set aside your own desires and seek to live out your faith so that it will be beneficial for others. Be quick to listen to others and their point of view. Be slow to speak when your desire is to simply cause division or chaos. Be slow to anger when others disagree with you, when others offer a differing opinion. For anger has never brought about God's righteousness. Embrace the fact that God's love for you is sufficient and that you have been called to share that love with others. If you are truly living out your faith, then others can't help but see it in you and in the work that you're doing. Continue to love as God has first loved you. Let's pray. Gracious God, it is easy for us to only see the good or to only see the bad and to focus on those things only. Help us to see the whole picture and to see that you are involved in every piece of it. And help us to spread the forgiveness and grace that you have given to us. In your name we pray. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds within the veil. Christ alone, cornerstone, Weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. Christ alone, cornerstone. Weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless stand before the throne. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able, as together we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
I believe in he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll continue with our prayers. children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. We pray for the church, that it is a safe haven for all who seek your presence. Fill it with pastors, deacons, and leaders who echo your expansive and generous welcome. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the whole of creation that plants and animals have the habitat and resources to thrive and flourish. Inspire us to protect threatened habitats and ensure a sustainable future for generations to come. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for individuals in positions of authority. Raise up wise and discerning leaders in federal, state, and local governments and guide them to seek the benefit of every person. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who are in need. Support and encourage those who are unemployed, underemployed, or experiencing poverty. Bring food, shelter, clothes, and stability for daily life. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this congregation, especially those beginning a new school year, students, teachers, and the families of our preschools at peace. Empower teachers and school administrators. Guide students in their learning and development. Accompany parents, foster parents, and caregivers who provide encouragement and love. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for the faithful departed who showed us how to honor God with our heart. Inspire us by their example and renew our faith trusting that we will be united with them in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In just a moment, we'll receive communion. And we'll do that in one of three ways. Uh, the first option you have is to come forward at the direction of the usher. I will be in the middle with the, with the bread. And on either side, there will be uh, wine or grape juice. So you would come up, receive the wafer, and go to either side for the, the wine or grape juice. The second option, if you're not comfortable with that, uh, the, when you came in, there were prepackaged cups that you could take and then bring with you to your, your, your seat. And you can take those uh, during our time of communion, and then um, and that works as well. And if you did not grab one of those and would like one, someone will gladly bring one. So you just need to raise your hand, and someone will will gladly bring that to you, or you can get up and 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 get one for yourself. And that third option is if you're not comfortable coming forward, and you're not comfortable, um, or you did not grab one to have with you in the pew, you would like me to come to you to give you communion, I will gladly do that. You just simply need to uh, indicate that when the time is right, and I will gladly come in and bring communion to you. All right, so uh, there is that. And also know that all are welcome at the table. All means all. So uh, you are sure welcome to come and have communion if you so desire. And I want to say uh, thank you for being here once again, and thank you for um, continuing to support the ministry that happens here at Peace even when things uh, go a little haywire like they did this morning. I'm grateful for uh, folks with uh, solutions that we can uh, move forward. And so uh, I'm thankful for that, but I'm thankful. And if you ask me how best to support us here at Peace, I'm always going to say, please pray for us. Pray for the ministry that happens here because we can't do it without your prayers. If you're able to help us financially, that's also uh, appreciated. Uh, there are offering plates uh, at, at the entrances uh, or exits as you go. 
that you can drop an offering there. You can stop by the office when it's open, uh, drop off offering. You can put it in the mail. You go to our website, uh, peaceoshkosh.com, donate here button, a couple of quick steps. You can do it lots of ways, uh, but most of all, please continue to pray for us. With that, let's get ready for communion. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. Let's pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. You gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body. It is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends of Jesus, come to the table. Receive nourishment for your journey. The gifts of God for the people of God. All are truly welcome. You may be seated. the bread of life you who come to me shall not hunger and who believe in me shall not thirst no one can come to me unless the father beckons and i will raise you up and i will you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood and drink of his blood you shall not have faith within you and I will raise you up and I will raise you up and I will raise you up you are the Christ, the Son of God, 
I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you, keep you in his peace. Let's pray. Well, spring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dan, if you want to scroll through to the blessing, these are the lyrics for the song. One more. Here. Nope. Back up. Maybe. All right. Well, well, receive the blessing. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Before we sing our sending song, I want, again want to say thank you for being with us here here in worship or watching with us along in the live stream. I'm glad we got the audio figured out, uh, and that's, that's always a good thing. So thank you for that. Thank you to uh, the folks who provided music. Thanks to the booth for uh, working with changing conditions. Thanks to our ushers and uh, everyone who, who helped in any way. It sure takes a lot of hands to make this service happen, and for that I am grateful, and I am grateful for you. Uh, and for your worship together. Our sending song this morning is found in the ELW, hymn 821, 821 in the ELW, uh, and it is Shout to the Lord, 821 in your ELW. Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never seem to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name i sing for joy at the work of your hands forever i'll love you forever i'll stand nothing compares to the promise i have in you my jesus my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let every breath all that I am never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Fountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. No
nothing compares to the promise I have in nothing I had to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God. Remember that God loves you, so do I. We'll see you soon.